Hello and welcome YouTubers and Doctor Who fanatics and for today I'll be taking a look at my Doctor Who book collection for 2016. Now it has definitely got bigger from my previous collection which was from like May 2015 I think. And yeah in that video I had two new adventures and now I've almost got all of them. Plus Virgin Missing Adventures and BBC Books have grown a little bit too. But what's changed the most is the Virgin New Adventures. And yeah, not too long ago, I've been starting Doctor Who book reviews. I've done two already released, which is Transit and Nightshade. So yeah, I'm going to be reviewing 10 Virgin books and then I'll be moving on to BBC books for a bit. So that'll be as a nice change. Yeah, I worked it out how I'm going to be doing my BBC books. The first 10 book reviews are going to be all Virgin books and then I'm going to change it to BBC books. So for the first 10 books reviews, I'll just confirm them already done transit and nightshade as i said next one will be lumbar which i'm currently reading then for the special book review another 1500 subscriber special videos times champion not really a virgin book but i'm just putting it in there then it's force the shadow lucifer rising bad therapy cold fusion original sin and sky pirates and yeah after that it would be bbc book reviews I'm thinking of doing one from each Doctor, so like a BBC First Doctor one, a BBC Second Doctor one, etc, etc. Yeah, not too sure which BBC books I will be reviewing, but I'll work that out or do book requests when I finish the first 10 book reviews, which are all Virgin books, with the special one being Time's Champion. So with no further ado, let's begin my Doctor Who book collection. So starting with the Virgin New Adventures, it begins with the Time Worm series. And I've got the first three. I do not have Revelation yet. And sucks that is, that is the rarest one out of the Time Worm series. But I should get it soon because it's not impossible. But yeah, I've got the first three with Time Worm Genesis by John Peel. Who did two of the Dalek stories from the BBC books. War of the Daleks and Legacy of the Daleks. Also Evolution from the Virgin Missing Adventures. I haven't read any of these. I want to get the full set before I start the Time Worm series. Time Worm Exodus, which I'm very interested in because of the villain. I know who the villain is. And as well, the story really interests me with it being in an alternative timeline where the Germans won the war. Sounds very interesting. And then we have the finest virgin book, Time Worm Apocalypse by Nigel Robinson. Yeah, his other storm is pretty thin as well. Definitely looks very psychedelic from the cover. This one doesn't really get the best reviews, so I'm going to guess that this one will be the weakest out of the series. So after the Time Worm series, we have the Cat's Cradle trilogy, and it starts off with Time's Crucible by Mark Platt. Haven't read this trilogy, there is a few books I haven't read, but yeah, I don't want to get into the Cat's Cradle trilogy without Time Worm, because it might be some things overlapping. But yeah, I've heard this one can be a little bit complicated, and yeah, those monsters look very familiar from a big finished story. Signs and Winders, but I can't really confirm if they're the exact same monsters as I can't really remember. But yeah, it should be good. It's by Mark Platt, who delivers some fantastic classics from the books to the big finishers. Then for the second and penultimate, it is Cat's Cradle Warhead, which is the one I'm most looking forward to. It looks really bleak, and Andrew Cartmel does nail it very well, as I've heard. And also, by reading the blurb, it sounds very realistic, so I'm really looking forward to that one. It starts off the War trilogy, consisting of Warhead, Warlock and Warchild. And then we have Witchmark, which I think will be the weakest out of the trilogy. It's got a really nice cover. I do love the cover, but for the story, it could be dull. I see mixed opinions on it. Some people love it, but a lot of people find it so dull and boring. And that's the worst thing a book can be, is dull and boring. So after we see on that but yeah I have, I have a feeling that this one would be my favorite this would be my second favorite and this one would be last place but we'll find out soon nightshade by mark gattis what a classic doctor who book one of my favorites here it is such a well written story it's got fantastic atmosphere the atmosphere is what drives the story you can check out my book review of nightshade it's simply a stunning read from start to finish, and I give it 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, I do have a few nitpicks, because again, with me, 10 out of 10, it has to be literally perfection. There has to be nothing wrong with it. Not even nitpicks. Yeah, I can be a little bit of a strict reviewer, but still, it's close to a 9.5 out of 10. Sorry, it's close to a 10 out of 10, absolutely. It's 
And that's a classic. The monsters are brilliant. The characters are brilliant. Like, everything about Nightshade is wonderful. So I hope the Big Finish audio adaption delivers. Even though the cover for the audio looks really fluffy and cute for some reason. That's not really the best direction for Nightshade. Because it's a really hopeless and depressing story. That's what makes Nightshade so good to me. It sounds so bleak to me. Because I love it where stories... Feels like there's no hope for anyone, that's what I love about a story. And yeah, following from the events of Nightshade, it does go into Love and War, which does make a departure for Ace, but yeah, she does come back. And yeah, Love and War is a classic Doctor Who story it's by Paul Cornell. The, the audio as well is absolutely wonderful. Love and War can be very complicated, so you do have to read big chunks of this one to get it, and for the audio as well, you've got to Listen to it all in one go and you have to really engage with it or you will be lost. But if you are really engaged in the story, you should find it a pretty easy read. Transit by Ben Aronovich. I do sort of like Transit, but I just don't believe it's written by Ben Aronovich. Remembrance of the Daleks to this? Oh, come on. Yeah, check out my review. I go in depth about why it's hated by fans, why it may be loved by fans. I do like it, I give it a 6. Maybe that might be being kind, but I do sort of like what Ben Aranovich did with Transit. It's got some really nice ideas. It's fantastic from the first half, but the second half, it just goes down and down and down. It's a really underwhelming second half of the book. The Pit by Neil Penswick, a very hated Doctor Who book. A lot of people say this is the worst Virgin New Adventure or one of the worst books they've ever read. Now I can't say this for myself because I haven't read it and I don't really want to. I haven't really looked in depth with people's reviews on this one. I don't know if it's just really dull, if it's that bad. I really don't know why people absolutely hate The Pit, but... Uh, I will eventually give it a read even though I don't really want to. And then we have Deceit which ends a lot of loose strands from like Time Room, Cat's Cradle and whatnot, like the infected TARDIS. I haven't read it, but reviews have been very mixed on it. Peter Darvo Evans, so a lot of his books, well three of his books that like he did, Independence Day, Asylum and this one, they're not very well liked. It does look really intriguing by the cover. I see some people really praising and defending it. And as well, it has a character from the comics from Nemesis of the Daleks as well, but I forgot the character's name. But yeah, that one just does sound interesting. I don't want to read it straight away. As I said, it ends a lot of strands from like Time Room, Count's Cradle and whatnot. So that'll be one of the later ones to give a read. Lucifer Rising, gonna be reviewing this one soon, I haven't started reading it, that'll be after Falls the Shadow. But Lucifer Rising is a very praised and loved Doctor Who book, so I hope I love it. It's by Jim Mortimer, he's a very sci-fi heavy writer, he does love his complicated paradoxical sort of stories at times like The Natural History of Fear. I do not know what to expect from this one, I don't really know anything about it, all I know is it's just a love Doctor Who book. And it's by Andy Lane as well, and he's a really good writer, so I hope this one delivers. White Darkness, this one really interests me. It's got like Hammer Horror elements from the Hammer House of Horror series, which is one of my favourite series and shows of all time. That's how you nail horror. It's got zombification, voodoo. It really sounds like my cup of tea, and it's by David A. McKinsey, who is actually... Oh, actually, I'm currently reading one of his books, and it's going fantastic so far, so he's shaping up to be pretty of a good writer, but I haven't finished the book, I've only read a bit of it. Next up, we have Christopher Bulis's introduction with Shadow Mind, and it's not very well liked by a lot of fans, but from what I've read of Christopher Bulis, I really do like his writings. Birthright by Nigel Robinson, again, a really thin Doctor Who book, love the cover. This one was adapted for an audio for the Beneath Summerfield range. And it sounds really good, this one does. And I'm not surprised this one was adapted in like 1988 or 1999. As it does not feature the Doctor in it at all. I think he's only in the introduction or the end. Iceberg by David Banks. I'm really looking forward to this one because it features the Cyberman and a one-off companion who is Ruby. See a lot of good reviews on this one, but what reviewers say is older fans do appreciate it more than younger fans. So... 
I should like it because it's got the Cybermen. All of that David Banks needs to do is make a base into Siege Story and make the Cybermen creepy. That's all you gotta do to impress me. So after Iceberg, we have the alternative time cycle arc, which I'm really looking forward to getting to. Someone requested me that I should take a look at it, and I will take a look at it, like sometime in the summer or something like that. But anyway, it has five books in it, all sound interesting. With Blood Heat, which starts off the alternative time cycle arc. I love Doctor Who and the Silurians, so I I should like this one. It has the unit team in this one as well, like the Brigadier. Liz Shaw, I think, is in it as well, but don't, uh, don't accept that as a fact, because I don't really know. The Dimension Riders by Daniel Blythe. I don't know anything on this one, really, so I can't really say anything on it. The Left-Handed Hummingbird, which introduces us to a very good writer, Kate Orman. Really excited to check this one out. I have a feeling that this one may be my favourite, or it would be Blood Heat, but we'll see. This one just sounds incredible. Conundrum, which is the sequel to The Mine Robber, so this one should be pretty good. I do like The Mine Robber, it is overrated, and as part 4 and part 5 is utterly silly. Yeah, hopefully this one will have a little bit more of a serious tone to it. And then we have No Future by Paul Cornell. I'm not sure if I would like this one or not. I know the villains in this story, as the wonderful place of TARDIS Wiki tells me that. But no, don't look at TARDIS Wiki, don't spoil it for yourself. But yeah, I already knew like the main enemy in this story ages ago, because I thought I, f I found it pretty easy as a guess. But it does have another villain as well, a rather forgotten Doctor Who villain, but apparently it's like really good in this story, so I'm going to wait and see about that. Next we have a Gareth Roberts story, quite a loved writer of course, Tragedy Day. Don't know anything about this one, looks pretty good. I haven't seen like the best reviews on it though, so I'll just wait and see on that one. Theatre of War. Not really of a popular Doctor Who book, so I found it quite strange this one is adapted, but I think Big Finish had the idea that this one had potential, so they adapted it as a Big Finish audio. And it seems to be getting pretty good reviews. Blood Harvest. I have a feeling this one is going to be adapted later down the line. I have a strong feeling. As Big Finish did say, they will be doing more uh, Big Finish novel adaptions after the secret one in December 2016. They said they've got more ideas. And my guesses are Goth Opera and Blood Harvest will definitely be adaptions because they're very popular books. And you can't adapt Blood Harvest without Goth Opera because they intertwine with each other a lot. I haven't read Blood Harvest, so it's by Terence Dix as well, so that should be pretty good. Strange England by Simon Messinan, this is his first Doctor Who book. Looks quite of a clockwork sort of story, don't really know anything about that book, haven't seen reviews. Then we have the big titan. Force the Shadow will be reviewed very soon. If I'm gonna guess about April time. You yeah, get really mixed opinions. Some people love it, absolutely adore it, but then people say it's like absolutely rubbish or average. It's like transit. I don't know which direction it would take me, but I wanna love it. My fear is it might have pacing issues because the book is so fat and some of the chapters are really long and that's something I don't like in books. I like it when chapters are quite short so you can quickly like take in the previous events of books. I hate it when chapters are really long like even though I love the well-mannered war the first chapter is like 40 pages long it's ridiculous but that well-mannered war gets away with it because I absolutely love the well-mannered war. Yeah, I want to I wanna love Force the Shadow, so we have to wait and see about that one. So hopefully it'll be a positive review. Second row, we have Parasite by Jim Mortimer. I don't see the best reviews on this one, but it sounds very psychedelic, weird, and absolutely bonkers. Also, really creepy as well. Like, from the reviews of it, people say it's a really creepy Doctor Who story, so that should be... It's like, maybe, um, psychological horror or something like that, so... That's definitely up my alley, because I love that sort of stuff. Warlock by Andrew Cartmel, the second story in the War Trilogy. Really looking forward to this one. I just love the sound of it. It's just really bleak, hopeless, and I know some of the stuff in it, and it sounds absolutely cool, it does. So that might be quite hard to read. Set piece, the departure of Ace. Not her ultimate final departure, that is in the comics, but this is a... Uh, her departure, sort of, in 
the Virgin New Adventures. I don't want to read this one straight away, you know, get like sort of a build up to it, so we're not going to read that one. Infinite Requiem by Daniel Blythe. Don't really like the sound of this one, if I'm honest, and reviews aren't really good on it. Yeah, a lot of people say it's one of the weakest on the Virgin New Adventures. Sanctuary by David A. McKenzie. It is a historical story. This one gets pretty good reviews. I think it gets overlooked, like overshadowed by like Original Sin, for example, but I love the cover. It's gorgeous. Original Sin, this one will be reviewed soon. Really looking forward to this one and the adaption in December. Big Finish are usually good with casting, so they should cast the villain very, very well. Well, hopefully, anyway. Sky Pirates, I am dreading this book. And look at, look at it, it's so thick it is. It's almost 300, actually, I think it's over 300 pages. Oh dear, I'm not looking forward to this one. Yeah, there's two reasons why I'm doing this book review last and, until I swap it to the BBC books. Number one, I'm dreading it. And number two, it may come out to be a really funny review of me just absolutely ranting the hell out of it and maybe doing more of a pirate voice or something like that so I don't think I am gonna like it to be honest just from looking at it I am not a fan of psychedelic and loud writing and Paul Mars is writing like that and Dave Stone is especially like that I think he's even worse to be honest because this one has some bonkers ideas Zampa featuring the Chelonians by Gareth Roberts Looking forward to this one. I love the Trillonians. They're really good, popular villains from the Virgin books. I hope they come back. Or well, even though the new adventures of Beneath Summerfield Volume 3 has come out called The Unbound Universe, I hope they will be in Volume 4. Toy Soldiers by Paul Leonard. He, de he definitely has a complicated style of writing, but I personally like it. If you know, if you're familiar with his style, then his books should be easy going for you. Head Games by Steve Lyons. This one does sound pretty good. But yeah, Steve Lyons is usually always a good writer. Bad Therapy by Matthew Jones. Again, this one will be reviewed shortly. I don't know anything about this story, but it looks pretty good. Some of the, like, stuff in this book doesn't really intrigue me, like uh, the Gans taking territory. That, that sounds a little bit like a subplot, pretty boring stuff. But the stuff on the Insane Asylum is what intrigues me about the book, so hopefully that is executed well. The Room of No Doors, I don't think I'll be reading this one anytime soon because it ends so many plot strands from different Doctor Who books. And if you know me, I like to experience stuff really in an order, so this one will be read last. And to be honest, the book doesn't really interest me at all, if I'm honest. I only got it for collection purposes. Now we have the king of the Virgin New Adventures, the rarest out of the lot, Lumbaro by Mark Platt, which I'm currently reading. It's about like um, £94 on Amazon for used condition on new, it's even worse, like £300. Yeah, that's how much I'm through it at this current moment in time. I'm recording this on the 8th of March. But uh, am I enjoying Lumbaro? We'll have to wait and see until the review. Now for a uh, Beneath Summerfield book, it's the Mary Shoe Extrusion, which I'm not going to bother reading anytime soon, maybe in the future. It's by Daystone again, which I fear that name, because it just reminds me of the Sky Pirates. But yeah, I've got it because I am going to be collecting all the Virgin books for a target at the end of 2016. Now to the Virgin Missing Adventures. Goth Opera. Very popular Doctor Who book. I've read it once, and I thought it was pretty good, but i got to reread it. But this one actually had an original cover, but it's like Nissa had blood all over her shirt and that was toned down because the people at Virgin thought it was just too graphic as a cover. But yeah, I need to reread that one. I enjoyed that one, Golf Opera. It's a classic. State of Change by Christopher Bulis. I know the villain in this one, so it should be quite interesting. I can see this one being adapted. Just got to change a few things and this one can work. But it's by Christopher Bulis, so it can be like a controversial pick because he is a hit and miss writer. And I don't really hear the best stuff on that book. Time of Your Life by Steve Lyons. Doesn't really get good reviews on Amazon, but where I check everywhere else, it seems to go down very well. It reminds me of Avengers on Varos. So that one should be pretty good. It has Grant Markham in. 
who's also in Killing Ground. You don't really need time of your life. I've read Killing Ground before, a while ago, and I really had no problem. But still, there are things that trace back into this book, but it's not essential. Lords of the Storm by David A. McKinsey, which I'm, I just started reading, just wanted to grab this book and give it a little go, because I just wanted a little taste of a, a book by David A. McKinsey, and for some reason I went for Lords for the Storm. And I looked on like at this ranking website, and this one's very low. I think it's not, I don't think it's hated, but I think it's more forgotten. And so far, I've read the prelude, the prologue, and chapter one, and I am really enjoying it. I think it's a fantastic story. The Sontarans are brutes, and that's how you nail Sontarans. But yeah, the plot hasn't got kicking so far. There's like a lot of good action so far in that prelude and that prologue. It was just absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to look forward to reading the rest of it. Killing Ground by Steve Lyons. The Cybermen, as I remember, were absolutely nailed in this book. I've got to reread this one, but I want to read this one first. If I want to read this one again, just add a little bit more of a build up to it. And with Grant Markin's character, because his character did not, did not stick in my head at all. Cold Fusion, a very rare Doctor Who book by Lance Parkin. This one gets very good reviews. I think it's like voted like the second best version missing adventure. The best mission adventure voted by fans is The Plotters. But I hope this one's good because I have been requested to review this one, so I hope it delivers. A Device of Death. This one features after Genesis of the Dark, so hopefully it'll be a classic so it belongs with the other Season 12 stories I got. Really nice cover, I love the covers on the Virgin Missing Adventures, they're really well detailed. And then we have the almighty well-mannered war. I absolutely adore this book, and the story, the audio, it is absolutely fantastic. It is funny, it's got comedy, it's violent, the action, the twists, it is unbelievably good. But yeah, just to remind, chapter one is very long. It's like 44 pages or something like that. It's very long. It just really gets going so well. And here we have the rarest Doctor Who book and the rarest item in my collection, Time's Champion. Time's Champion is unbelievably difficult to get. I can add Lumbarrow, Dying Day, Sovall Sin, Dark Path, Cold Fusion and well Mannered War and it would not even calculate to the price of what Time's Champion is worth. Yeah, books like Lumbarrow and Dark Path, Wellman of War, Cold Fusion do appear on eBay quite occasionally, but Time's Champion hardly ever. So even though I do give like optimism that people will get Doctor Who books and rare Doctor Who items, this one will be very difficult to get your hands on. But yeah, I was lucky enough to get this book for £60, which is an unbelievable bargain. Yeah, I'm very happy to have this in my collection. It just makes my book collection shine, it does. The pages are crystal white. And yeah, we'll be reviewing this one, because it'd be nice to review Times Champion on YouTube. Yeah, I really hope this one delivers, because I'm going to nickname this book The Holy Bible of Doctor Who. Because it's just that rare. So yeah, really, really happy to have that one. Yeah, let's move on to the BBC books. So for classic novelizations, I don't have a lot of them. I don't really want to collect them yet. So I want to focus on the BBC books and the Virgin books first, but I'm not really too keen on getting them as of now. But maybe in the future, I'll get more of the classic novelizations and Target books and whatnot. But yeah, we have Evil the Daleks, a very rare Doctor Who book, about like £30 on Amazon or something like that. Yeah, very happy to have this one. Evil of Daleks is a classic Doctor Who story, and have read this book, and it was bloody marvellous. Really enjoyed that Doctor Who book. Now for Target reprints, Doctor Who and the Daleks. Quite a few things changed in that one from the original story, but it's great. Abominable Snowman, which I do enjoy. I do find it difficult to get into Abominable Snowman on audio and reconstruction. Today the Daleks, that's a great one and the Ark in Space, which I do enjoy. So now to the BBC books, and we start off the first PDA with the Devil Goblins from Neptune. I think when I start my BBC book reviewing, like doing a first Doctor one, a second Doctor one, and a third Doctor one, I think this should be the third Doctor one I should do, because it's the first one from the BBC book PDA range, so I think this one I should review. And Keith Toppin and Martin Day are good writers. Yeah, I have a feeling that I should review that one. 
The Murder Game by Steve Lyons featuring the Salations, who are really good monsters. They appeared in Big Finish twice. I believe they've appeared in the comic as well, but my mind may be wrong there. But yeah, I haven't read The Murder Game, but it's like a murder mystery, and of course, that's always something to drive the story. Yeah, really looking forward to that one. It's good old Trout, and even though it's Salamander. But who cares, really? The Ultimate Treasure by Christopher Bulis. This one gets actually pretty good reviews. Like a treasure hunt sort of thing. Got a robot unicorn on there, so I don't know what that's all about. But I don't think I'll read this one anytime soon, though. Eye of Heaven, which is the first Fourth Doctor story for the PDAs. And this one, Jim Mortimer takes a rather risky approach placing it in like a matrix order and not really linear so it's a lot like creatures creatures sorry from beauty so not sure how this one's gonna go down for me it gets really good reviews when people say they understand it but it's all about the format really which throws people off not really the story content salvation where the doctor goes to new york and battle aliens it's by steve lyons so it should be a good one I'm not, I'm not too sure if I've actually read this one or not, I can't remember. Uh, my mind's completely gone, so I must have completely forgotten it. I'm not sure if I have actually read this one. My mind is gone. Deep Blue. I think this should be a Fifth Doctor one I should review. I was originally going to review it until I decided to do Virgin Book reviews first. This one sounds great, has a really creepy monster on it. Really good stuff. Also features the unit team and for their timeline it features after the Green Death. So a little bit of a paradoxical sort of thing going on here. It's by Mark Morris who can be a little bit iffy with his writing so I have to see about that. Storm Harvest by Robert Perry and Mike Tucker. Mike Tucker loves the Seventh Doctor. He's done every single story he's done is full of the Seventh Doctor. Yeah Mike Tucker really nails the Seventh Doctor story all the time. He really knows the character very well. He's just the Krill, and it eventually has a sequel called Dust Breed, and actually I think Dust Breed happens after Storm Harvest, chronologically. And yeah, the chapters aren't too long, so I always love that in the book. City at World's End, Christopher Bulis, love this one, good old Doomsday sort of stuff, I want to reread this one again. Such a classic, the introduction's brilliant, I love everything about that book. Got some, got some good twists in there, even though I don't think they were needed, but... Still, it's a very good Doctor Who book for the most part. Tomb of Valdemar by Simon Messingham, which features in the Key to Time era. I don't really know anything about this book, really, so... I'm not too sure what to say about that one. Grave Matter. Really do like the sound of this one. Zombies on an island. Sounds really good, that one. Superior Beings, which sounds an awful lot like Last Man Running. It's by Nick Waters, who is a pretty good writer. I do like, I do follow his stuff, I do, he's a really good writer. I do like the cover as well, it's simple, but yeah, it's effective, so looking forward to that one. Even though it doesn't get the best reviews. Relative Dementias, a Sanf Doctor and Ace story. Do quite like the cover, it's quite bleak, again, quite standard. Don't know too much about that one. Synthespians by Craig Hinton, the lover of continuity references. And this one features the Autons. This, this book went through a lot of trouble with copyright, as you can see. It takes a lot from Dynasty. But yeah, this isn't the original cover. This is a second cover. The original cover wasn't released due to copyright problems and all that rubbish. The Indestructible Man, the rarest PDA by Simon Messingham, even though the cover looks really fluffy and cute, it's actually a really dark, depressing, and downright disgusting Doctor Who book, as I've been told. No, I haven't read this one, but I really want to read it for some reason. It takes a lot of inspiration from shows like UFO, The Thunderbirds, Terror Hawks, and whatnot, and I can see a reference straight away from UFO. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that one. I haven't really seen any reviews on it though. Time Travelers by Simon Guerrier. The reason why this book intrigues me is by Simon Guerrier, who I love the writer. Yeah, really looking forward to that book. Chapter point, the chapters are quite a little bit long, but shouldn't be a problem. And Atom Bomb Blues, which is the final. That's, this one's the penultimate from the PDAs, and this one's the final one. It's by Andrew Cartmel, so 
leaky weeds as now, as I've been told, so this one should be pretty good. So they were the past Doctor Adventures, now to the 8th Doctor Adventures. I've only got one more since my previous book collection. I would like to get all the EDAs and uh, read them all in order and review them all in order, as you know they are very convoluted arcs in the 8th Doctor Adventures. I would prefer to read them in order than a random order. Maybe I, I would like read one book, for example, like Dominion, and I won't understand it because it follows like arcs and whatnot. So I'm gonna soon get all the EDAs and review them and read them all in order. So for the ones I've got is Genocide by Paul Leonard, as I said, a quite of a confusing writer at times. And yeah, the italics is like after when they escape from the place they are in. Yeah, not a very popular one that one isn't. Van der Decken's Children, a really nice cover. Chris Bulis's first Eighth Doctor adventure, I think. And he was really good actually. The writing, uh, sorry, the text inside the book is pretty small. But from what I remember, I enjoyed that Doctor Who book, like Ghosts on a Spaceship. Yeah, I'm not going to say too much about that book. Experience it for yourself. The Scarlet Empress by Paul Mars. You know, he's a very psychedelic and loud writer, really bonkers ideas, which uh, a lot of people will like, but I'm not a fan of Paul Mars' work, so I don't think I'm going to look forward to that one. The Face Eater by Simon Messingham. This one looks really good. I can't remember if I read this one or not, I really do not know. It looks really good from the cover. And the bio as well. Dominion by Nick Waters, don't know anything about this one because the cover doesn't really say much. Uh, the bio sort of does, but uh, rather ambiguous this book is from the cover and the bio. And yeah, with Interference I've only got book two, and not book one, but it shouldn't really be a problem, it's not that rare to be honest. When you're comparing it to the version books, it's not that rare. But yeah, I've, had, I've got book two. Parallel 59, a really hated one because people say it does, it does not make sense. It's got too many plots going on. Banco Legacy, this is one I have read and remember. I like this one. It's quite creepy and really disturbing. And yeah, it's like featured in different timelines. It's got the same thing going with Eye of Heaven a little bit. And transit, it just goes. In, it jumps into different locations in different timelines. Like one of the settings is in like the present time of the Eighth Doctor. One of them is like in 50 years before, but I can't really remember too much. But it's like featured in different timelines and whatnot, and diary entries. Eater of Wasps, a really creepy cover by Trevor Baxendale, very loved writer. Grim Reality, which does not have the picture by there. None of them do. It's a misprint on all the books. And I don't know anything about this one, but it reminds me of the Mind Robber. So hopefully it will be you know, as good as the Mind Robber. As I said, I do like it. An Acrophobia by Jonathan Morris. A really good classic one here. I know it sort of follows an arc, which is the Sab Sabbath arc. But you don't really need the adventures of Henrietta Street to get into this one. Because it actually has a flashback scene to that. So you can, you can get this standalone. Half-Life, one of my favourite covers by Mark Michalowski, I haven't read that one. And The Sleep of Reason by Martin Day, this one looks really good, I can't remember if I've read that one or not, actually I think I was going to read it but I didn't, but that one looks really good. And then for my last one which is the penultimate, from the EDAs, To the Slaughter by Stephen Cole. Doesn't get the best reviews this one does, so... But yeah, that one won't be read in a long time. So for the last couple of books, we have Big Finish Short Trips, 50th Anniversary, and History Collections and different bits as well. I haven't really pushed myself to get any more of these, but we'll do in the future, maybe. Because as I said, I'm, fo I'm focusing on the version books. But yeah, we have the Big Finish books, and some of these are like gold. They are, they are so rare. Yeah, there's a few common ones, there's a few rare ones, there's very rare ones, and then there's some absolutely crazy to get. Most of these are like 50 quid each, some of them range to about 100 quid. And uh, I think like three of the Big Fun and Short Trip books are rarer than Lumbar and Dying Days, it's crazy. So I would love to get all of them, but that's going to be a challenge. Yeah, we have Life Science, which is an easy one to get. The Christmas Treasury, this is a rare one to get, like 50 quid. 
Seven Deadly Sins, this is the easiest one you can get. That one should not be a problem. The History of Christmas, another really rare one, like 50 quid. Farewells, which is quite rare, but 20 quid. Nothing too crazy. And in Transmissions, I'm very happy to have this one. This is like 75 pounds or something like that. Crazy amount of money, I'm very happy to get this. I, got, I paid this, like 15 quid I paid for this, which is actually the price where it was released. So that is a crazy bargain, that is. Yeah, very happy to have this in my collection. It's almost as rare as the Lumbar, which is crazy, that is. 50th Anniversary Reprints, 10 Little Aliens, which is, isn't loved by many, but some of you do have a soft spot for it. Festival of Death by Jonathan Morris. Get Anything by Jonathan Morris. He really nails the paradoxical story well in this. Fear of the Dark. And the Silent Stars Go By. I've read this one and I didn't like it. No, I didn't really like that one. It was a bit of a slog for me. History Collection with the Round Heads. Really good story if uh, the, se the second Doctor doesn't do a lot in it. Still good though. And Human Nature, which is a very deep character-driven story. Really good, that one. Whoology as well, definitely recommend that. And for my only new series, when I've got Feast of the Drowned, I'm not going to get any of the others because I'm not interested. And for other books, I have The Vault, The Secret Lives of Monsters, The Essential Guide, Space Travel's Doctor Who book. Also got this as well, Doctor Who Missing Episodes. Got some very interesting stuff about the missing episodes it has. It's full of information, which is really good. And some other books I forgot to show you, like Decided Destiny, two by there, and some Doctor Who quiz books as well. So thanks for watching my Doctor Who book collection. Or do you see the collection will come out late March? Of course, people are going to look forward to that. I will see you in the next one, whatever that will be. So. See you in the next one, and have a good one.